again about being on our hope line as well as our own sister Nasia McDaniels every Saturday. This young lady is on the hope line reading a scripture from the word of God as well as our own Deacon Tannis Vaughn that are on the line every Saturday and we thank God for you. Especially those prayer warriors. They give us a word. They just don't pray. You get the word of God during this 30 minute teaching. I'm telling you, just take 30 minutes out of your Saturday and watch God change some things for you. So please tune in to our Hope Line. And if you would like to give to Rehoboth Temple, you can do so by going to our website, RehobothTempleChurch.org and give utilizing Givelify. If while here, you can give utilizing our Clover machine. And if you would like to send your seed in the mail, you can do so by sending it to 1111 East Long Street, P.O. Box 83326, and the zip code is 43203. And at this time, we're going to turn it back over to our music department. God bless you. Praise God, everybody. I just have a, a tag to add to the morning announcements, and it takes place this evening at 5 p.m. at the Church of Christ of Apostolic Faith on Brenton L. Avenue. And it's bringing city leaders, judicial leaders, school leaders, students, families, and the faith community together to pray for our youth as they return to school. And this movement is not a protest, it's a pray test for the city that prays. And that's this evening at the Brenton L. Church of Christ of the Apostolic Faith at 5 o'clock p.m. More information is being given out right now, but we invite everyone to join us at 5 o'clock at the Brittany L. Church of Christ at 1200 Brittany L. Avenue, 5 o'clock p.m. for a pray test as we pray for our city and as we pray for our youth.
Sing your song. Sing your song. That's all right. Sing your song. Yes. From my old heart. And I move. From my old friend. Yes, I move. From my old way of strife. Thank God I moved out to a brand new life. Well, it changed my old way with words. And it changed my old devil mind. He changed my heart and he gave me a brand new star. Thank God I moved out to a brand new From my old house, and I move from my old friend. Yes, I move from my old way of strife. Thank God I moved out to a brand new.
Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. How many came to have church today? Hallelujah. 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 I got a brand new life. It was because of Jesus Christ. He changed my life. He changed my ways. And now I serve him. Let's put our hands together. Let's put our hands together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I came to have church. I come to praise my Savior. I didn't always have the desire to come to church, but now that I'm here, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to give him his praise. Because he could have left me where I was at. But he drew me into the house of God. And now that I'm here, I'm going to praise him. So you might as well go ahead and put your hands together and open up your mouth and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all right. I know you wish Pastor Barry was here, but a young man is here today. He got a little more energy today. And I thank God that he saved my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That I had a desire to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I just had to get that out. Just something in me. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for being here. We count it as joy for the opportunity to be before you. Hallelujah. I thank God for this choir and the songs that they sung. I thank you for my church family and supporting me. I thank you for the honor of God being in my life. You just don't know where I was on yesterday. And to be standing here today is nothing but God's grace and mercy. And for me to act like I'm not supposed to be here, it's unbelievable. I remember my father... He probably doesn't remember years ago when I was younger and it was Christmas Day and I was getting up and I was walking to the Christmas tree and my dad ran down the hallway. And he told me, he said, Bishop Barry going to ask you to preach on a Sunday morning. And I looked at him like, what? <laughs> he said, Bishop Barry is going to ask you to preach on a Sunday morning. And because of his prophetic prayers and the prayers of my parents, I'm here today. I'm here today because of my grandmother prayed for me. She took the time to pray for me. She had me on her mind. I don't know about you, but I came to praise the Lord. I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we got all that out the way. <laughs> If you can give your, get your Bibles and turn with me to Luke 18, I'm going to be short. But I just love God. Amen. Naturally, I'm a, night, I'm a quiet person. But if you mention the Bible or if you mention God, something in me in my spirit just wakes up. Amen. You can't shut me up because God's been that good to me. So every time I come into the presence of God, it's nothing but fullness of joy. I'm trying to stop, but it's all in me. When you fill with the Spirit, it's all in you. How many of you know what I'm talking about? When you fill with the Spirit, it's all in you. It comes out. Hallelujah. Luke 18. If you have it, will you please stand? We're going to read. I'm going to read the first eight verses of this chapter. And then we will take our text from there. Everyone that, said, that has it, say amen. amen. And it reads, and he spake the parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and not to faint, saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but after said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, 
I will avenge her, least by her conti continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which city day and night, which seeketh day and night unto him, thou he bear, though he beareth with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily, nevertheless. When the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Now, the text that I want to come from is in the first verse. And it says, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought to always pray and not to faint. And my subject for a couple, just a couple of minutes is, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Now ask yourself, how bad do you really want it? Are you really willing to do what it takes to get what you want? Is it good, either if it's good or bad? Just think about it. How bad do you really want it? Yes. Now let's jump in. Jesus, Jesus' life and teachings were recorded in the Gospels. These accounts were written in the first four books of the, of the New Testament. These four men had the awesome task to record Jesus' life. We have Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were just the names of the books that they were written, that were inspired through by the Holy Spirit that supervised them in penning these documents in the New Testament. It talks about Jesus' birth, his childhood, his ministry, his death, his resurrection, and the ascension to the right side of the Father. Jesus was a powerful man that touched everyone that he came in contact with. Speaking into the lives of people and, make, and meeting them at their personal level. Either with a physical touch or just a spoken word that for those to receive his power would change their current situation. Jesus and his team of disciples would change would change the world. They will spread the good news of the gospel that everyone will listen to them. The Great Commission will be the basis for evangelism across the world. The truth that was in his voice as he spoke commanded everyone to listen and it was that was around him. Jesus had a great love and compassion for people. Let me say that again. Jesus had a great compassion and a love for people. Jesus would go out and get to the right to the point. He would get right to the significant part of the point that of the matter. He took the time to connect and build relationships. He wanted to talk to people. He wanted to let you know that there's a better way. He didn't care what background you came from, what race you was in, what religion you was in. He was sick took time to talk to you. He will meet your need. He will speak that word. He will correct you, and then he will say, go, sin no more. Most people will cut you off, but he'll let you know you're doing wrong. But go. Go in peace. Don't tell nobody. But go in peace and let them know that there is a better way. Jesus came to save us. And like I said before, he took the time to connect and build relationship with people. He will teach, he will preach. He will lead, he will heal the sick, have the deaf to hear, cast out demons, raise the dead, 
bind up the brokenhearted, set the captives free, fed the multitudes, rebuked the religious people. He even went as far as dying on a wooden cross to save our sins, to die for you and me. Jesus was not only a man without any sin, but he was the son of God. Hallelujah. Jesus intercedes for us. Jesus did what he was told by the Father. He did that to please the Father. How many know that we can do the same as Jesus? So he is a perfect example that let us know that we are in tune with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I done lost my spot. That's what happens when you got new technology. But I thank God anyway. He ain't going to stop me. He ain't going to stop me. Because I'm still here. The devil trying. Because he mad. He mad. He got a young person up here praising God. You ain't got to be old to praise God. Not saying there ain't nothing wrong with it. But ain't nothing wrong with serving God while you young. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing wrong with serving God when you young. Because I told God I wanted to serve, I wanted to party till I got old, get saved, and die. But thank God he didn't listen to me. Thank God he didn't listen to me. He saved me when I was 16 years old. Young man. Young man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God that he didn't give up on me. I gave up on myself many times. But he did not give up on me. He did not give up on me. He told me he loved me. He said, no matter what, don't give up. Keep going back. I don't care if they talk about you. Keep going back. It might not look right now, but it's going to get better. I'm fighting for you. Don't let the devil have his way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for this word because this word has touched my heart. It makes me go farther in him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why we should be given this grace, because he's given us grace and mercy for what he has done for us. And that's why we should continue to praise him for what he has done, because he is so worthy of the praise. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He didn't have to do it, but he did. He died for you and me. He saved me and you. He did. People don't realize when you come to church, you praise God. You give God praise. When I go to work on Monday, it's the hardest things I have to do. But I thank God because I got him on my side. If I'm going through, he'll give me a song in my heart. He'll give me a praise in my heart to let me know that I can serve a great God, that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. And I thank God for that. I thank God for him. There's not another tongue that I can give praise to because I love him that much. In this text, we find that Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. Jesus uses a form of language called parables. A parable is a proverb, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used a fair language that was also called parables. This is the language that he used. He used this type of communication to give us a better understanding to those that are seeking him. There are 39 parables in the, recorded in the scriptures in the, in the gospels, in the Bible. Jesus answered it best in the book of Matthew. And the NIV says, when his disciples asked him, why do you speak in parables? Jesus responded by saying to his disciples, to you it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Not to know it has not been granted for whoever has spiritual wisdom because he has receptive to God's word to him more will be given and he will richly be richly and abundantly supplied. But whoever does not have spiritual wisdom because he has devalued God's word from even what he has will be taken from him. This is the reason why I speak in parables. Because while having the power of seeing, they do not hear, nor do they see. 
and while having the power of hearing, nor do they understand and grasp spiritual, spiritual things. Jesus tells a short story about a judge and a widow that were in the city. Jesus gives a description of the judge as a man that did not fear God, nor did he fear man. That's a bad man when you don't even fear God. No fear man. You a bad man. I can be around you because I got everything. I don't fear man, but I do fear God. I got sense enough to fear God. But this judge did not fear God. You a bad man. I, I, you a bad man. There was a widow that had a legal situation that she needed help with. The judge had the power to help this widow with this situation. She sought this judge every single day for an answer. Could you see somebody coming to you, up to you after church every Sunday, having a need? Having a need right after church. Here they come. I got to go out the side door. Praise God. Oh, God, here she come again. Praise the Lord. I got to go out the side door. I don't, want to, I don't want to see this lady. She keep asking me for the same thing every Sunday. But this lady had persistence. She didn't give up. She saw this judge. She said, can you please help me? I have a need. So she asked him to avenge me of my adversary. What does that mean? To avenge me of my adversary. That means she wanted somebody to protect her, defend for her, take care of her enemies. Help me to vindicate justice against those that are against me. Take care of my adversary. I can see the judge wanting to avoid this widow because he did not want to have any dealings with this woman. This judge had the legal power to save this widow, but he chose not to do anything on the behalf for a short period of time. But what happens when you're persistent? What happens when you keep going to God? What happens? He said within himself, because I don't fear no man or God, I'm going to give him what she want. He had a change of heart. She kept going to this man every day. You're going to get sick and tired of me. Because I'm coming every day, every time you see me. As soon as you open that door, I'm going to be standing right there. Asking you for your help. And you know how we do it. We avoid the situation. We will close our door. Don't answer the door. Don't answer the phone. That's her. I know that's her. Thank God for calling ID, huh? Because we know it's her. See, now you got to call private. Because then they don't know. But because she was persistent in what she was doing, she got what she wanted. She got what she needed. Hallelujah. He said, I will avenge her. At least by her continual coming to weary me. How has she, how bad did she want this? How bad did she want this? That she would come every single day to ask for help. She kept bugging. She kept begging this man. Can you help me? Every day she saw him asking him for assistance until he finally gave in. Let me give it as more. Let me take it further. My daughter, I love her to death. Her name is Faith. She loves me. She would do anything for me. But I've known her in the last couple of years. She's persistent and when she wants something. She's very persistent. I could be sitting here watching the game. And here she comes. Hey, Dad. I need something from you. 
Or if my, if my dad wants to go somewhere, she say, my dad would say, go ask dad if you can go with me. She'd say, hey, dad, can I go with Papa? I said, yeah, go ahead. You know what the next question is. Can I have some money? <laughs> Don't care if I'm watching the game. She wants to know, can I have some money? So I said, in a minute, Faith, I'm watching the game. So she said, okay, dad. Thinking that she didn't forgot. I thought she didn't forgot. I'm watching the game. So she comes a half an hour later. Hey, dad. You said I could have some money. Remember that? Papa's getting dressed. I think I need that money right now. He's about to leave. Okay, Faith, I'm watching the game right now. I, I got you. Thinking she forgot. Hey, dad. Hey, dad. Don't you hear me calling you? Papa's leaving. Don't, can, I get that money? can I get that money now? I don't want to get left. But the same story is, she was persistent. She didn't give up. No matter how many times I told her to wait, she still kept coming back. That's what we had to do. She came back until she got what she wanted. And she wasn't going to give up hope. I could have told her no. She still was going to say, hey, dad. Hey, dad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus explained to his disciples the major point of this parable. Jesus said to them to hear what the judge just said because of the widow's consistency in pursuing the judge for help and not giving up. She eventually got what she needed in the same manner with us. Will not God avenge us, fight for us, and take care of us, of his own elect, when we cry day and night, day and night, for his help? How long will God bear with them that God will come speedily and take care of our adversary? Keep praying. You think God don't hear you? He hears you. Keep praying. Keep, keep seeking God. Cast all your cares on God, for he cares for you. God knows what you need before you even ask. He knows it, but he wants to hear you say it. That, that puzzled me. I'm like, God know everything. So why do I have to pray and ask him if he already knows it? If I need a car, why, why, is it, why am I saying why? God, you already know I need a car. But he wants to hear you say it. He wants you to acknowledge him as God. He wants you to speak it into existence. Hallelujah. The next point I want to make is the power of prayer. Having a prayer life is essential for the spiritual growth and survival of the believer. Jesus told his disciples that men ought to always pray always pray and not to faint. Prayer is a two-way communication between God and us. Prayer connects us to God. Let me say that again. Prayer connects us to God. And we gain spiritual strength when we pray to God. Prayer leads us to God. Do you remember a song that we used to sing? Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. We don't sing that song no more. But it's vital, vital when we are praying to God. When we pray to God, we can make our petitions and requests known to him. Asking God for what we need, knowing in faith that he will make a provision for us. We can ask for anything in his name and that he will do it. Our prayers are confidential. Our prayers are confidential. That means he won't tell anybody. If you tell me all your secrets, it's between you and him. Matthew 7, 7 says, and 8 says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receiveth, and he that seeketh, findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be open unto you. 
Three things that I want to leave. Ask. The first thing we should do is ask. It shall be given unto you. We have to make our requests known unto God. We ask God because we want to get the answer. We want to attain the answer from him. When you call on God, you want an answer. When you ask somebody a question, don't you want them to respond? Don't you want them to answer you back? Because when you ask a person a question, they don't answer you. You're looking like you get mad. Didn't I just ask you a question? Why aren't you responding? So when we pray, we're asking God to respond to us. Matthew 21, 22 says, In all things, whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, Amen. believing, ye shall receive. Mark 11, 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. When you pray, ask, but you've got to also have faith and believe that you shall receive, and you will receive it. The second thing I'm going to talk about is seek. Seek and you shall find. One seeks in order to find. To go search for it and search for it. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Hebrew 11, Hebrews 11, 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently. That means over and over again. So you can't come to church on today and seek him and don't seek him the rest of the week. It doesn't work like that. And then you wonder why God doesn't answer prayer. Because we're, we have to diligently seek him. Hallelujah. I'm reminded of the story of the woman of the issue of blood. She had it for 12 years. She gave all that she had to get herself better. How bad did she want it? She went behind Jesus. And she said, if I could just touch. How bad did she want it? If I could just touch the hem of his garment. I could be made whole. I can be made whole. When we go to prayer, if I can just reach heaven, if I can just reach the presence of God, I can be made whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the last one is knock. Knock and the door shall be open. Revelation 3 and 3 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man fear my voice and open the door, I will come at him, at to him, and will sup with him, and he with me. So when you pray to ask and receive, seek and you will find, knock and the door shall be opened. We know who we can turn to when we need his help. But we must remember, communication is a two-way street. God wants to talk to us. A phone, everybody has a phone, right? We all have phones. A phone has a speaker and a receiver. A speaker that you talk you, and talking to and a, and a receiver that you're listening to. One person talks and the other one's supposed to listen and vice versa. This is a point of having a phone conversation. One talks and the other person listens. Have you ever been in a one-sided conversation? 
Let me ask that again. Have you ever been in a one-sided conversation? They have an opinion about everything. It gets to the point where you put the phone down, you hit the mute button, or you put it on the side of your face. This is the time where you go to the you go to the restroom, you make a sandwich, you go check your emails, and you come back, and this little person's still on the phone talking. To my girl, yeah, this and that, and that girl, yeah, you this and that. And then what do they say to you when you get back on the phone? Do you feel me? Did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, I heard what you saying. I heard everything we said. Well, what did I say? Then you know you're busted. That's how we sometimes do God. We do all the talking, but we forget that God wants to talk to us. He wants to communicate to us. He loves us. It's something when the Father tells you he loves you. It's something. I was, thinking about the, I was just thinking about the garden when God came down in the cool of the evening and he had conversation with Adam and Eve. That's how he wanted to have the conversation with us. He wants to talk to us. So when we pray, make your, 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 your prayers known. But wait for the answer. Wait. Wait. He wants to talk to you. I remember one time he spoke to me. He said, when you're done, I I'll give you the answer. When you get done talking, I got the answer. When you get done talking, I'll tell you what you need to know. But we got to listen. We got to listen. Is anybody getting something out of this message? Yes. Hallelujah. The subject is, how bad do you want it? Now I want to go to the pool of Bethesda. You remember the story? Where this certain man was there. And he had been sick for how long? 38 years. The angel had came to the pool. And the first person that got into the water got their blessing, got their healing. Everything that they was seeking was, was, was satisfied. This man could never get in. But Jesus knew that he was there. He knew that he was laying there. He knew it. And he asked him the question, will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? How bad do you want it? Don't even worry about the pool. Will thou be made whole? How bad do you want it? What does he do? He makes up all kinds of excuses. Or why he can't get in the pool. The man is standing right there. Jesus, the son of God, is standing right in his face. I will heal you right now. Will thou be made whole? After he made all the excuses, he said, take your bed up and get up and walk. Get up and walk. Don't worry about it. I got you. Don't worry about it. I'm the man. That, that, the, I'm the man. I want to put it like that, but that, that, that's the way it is. I'm the man. Amen. What we always praying, remember that we should, we should not faint. We should not give up on praying to God. Pray without ceasing. When it feels like God is not answering your prayers, keep praying. Keep on praying. Galatians 6, 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. We cannot give up and quit. Become spiritually weak and hopeless. We got to keep on praying. We got to keep on praying. We got to keep on praying.
We got to keep on praying. Hallelujah. There's some people that want the Holy Ghost. How bad do you want the Holy Ghost? How bad do you want it? I know most of us are saved in here, but there's some people out on, on the live stream and they're contemplating about being saved. How bad do you want it? All you have to do is ask. Ask and receive, and he shall fill you with the Spirit of God. He shall fill you with the Holy Spirit. I am an eyewitness. I seek the Lord. I seek the Lord, and he filled me with his Spirit. At a young age, and I thank God. He gave me the desires of my heart. It's because of my parents' prayers that he filled me. Now it's my turn to help someone else. Now it's my turn to seek someone else. We just can't keep all this Holy Ghost to ourselves. But we got to be witnesses. We got to tell other folks. One of the people at my, church, uh, at my job said, what church you go to? I said, he's long in 22nd. Everywhere I go, somebody asks me. I tell them, just come to church. I ain't been there in years. Just come on in. Don't matter if you've been here once or twice. It's always a return policy. You can come in just the way you are. If you're saved, if you're backslidden, we'll take you back. And I thank God that he took me back. Even when I failed him, he still loved me. And I thank God for his word. Hallelujah. I just feel this all in my spirit. So we can't stop praying. Keep on praying as I sit in my seat. How bad do you want it? I told God I want it real bad. As I was reading this text three years ago, I was sitting in the chair and I was reading this text. The Lord spoke to me. He said, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? I said, Lord, give it to me all. Whatever I got to go through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, yes, Jesus. I want it all. I'll save you till I die. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I thank God for it. Oh, Jesus. Thank God for his word. His word has kept me all these years. His prayers has kept me all these years. I get that most you got. I'm trying to keep going, but I just thank God. I thank God. Hallelujah. He saved my soul. He filled my cup and I run it over. I thank God to be standing here. I also have so many family members that don't see the same thing. They just think it's not for not. But I stand on his word. And I know his word is true. I may be alone, but I thank God that I'm never going to leave his side, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Sometimes I get weary, and I want to give up, because the world makes it seem like it's so much fun. But I thank God that he has his arms wrapped around me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> he loves me. That's why I got to serve him. That's why I got to serve him. I thank God. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Would everyone please stand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just want to say a prayer. Lord, Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for touching our heart, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your love, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you for saving us, Lord Jesus. 
We don't pray in vain, but we believe in your word, Lord. We believe in your name. We know that we ask that you will answer, Lord. Touch everyone that's here, Lord Jesus. Bless them, Lord. As they go through, Lord Jesus. Fight their battles, Lord Jesus, for them, Lord, that they might praise your name. You are the one true God. And only you that we will serve, Lord. Those that are seeking you, that you ask that you fill them, Lord. Touch our pastor, Lord. Touch Lady Bear in a special manner. Heal her body, Lord, as she's went through the operation, Lord. Touch her body from the crowns of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you are on time, God. And as we go forth, Lord, we praise you. And we give you, we lift your name up. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful, wonderful word. Hallelujah. Don't you agree with me? What a wonderful word. Hallelujah. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? The effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. There's another scripture that says, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, I'm waiting for my due season. You shall reap if you faint not. Let's give our speaker another hand. He talking about, oh, my goodness. My, I remember when he was just a little boy running around. But look at him now. Look what God has done. My, 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 my. He's talking about he's a young man. He preached like an old man to me. Oh, he swung the blade. He put his weight on it, Alvin. Yeah. <laughs> We praise God for the word today. Haven't you had a wonderful time at church today? I have. I've been blessed. I've been blessed, and I thank God for his presence today. All right, it's time for our offering, and we're going to bless our offering as well. When the deacons are coming and the ushers to give you your envelopes, I'm going to thank God for all those who put their hands to the ministry here, the ushers, the deacons the media, the musicians, the choir. The choir sang today, didn't they sing? 